Hello, this is Katie. Welcome to my tutorial today. So today we're going to be making what is the kind of finishings for another project that I've uh, recently made for my YouTube channel. So it's the clasp and which is this little section here and the little end cones for my crocheted necklace. So this is my crochet necklace. So I've made them in lots and lots of different colours, as you'll see on my video. Uh, this particular one is garnet and it's a really nice way of finishing a piece and it being completely handmade. So being completely handmade um, is actually not using any pre-made pieces, just continuously hand making the entire piece. So we're going to make the clasp and these little cones and I'll show you how to attach them to the piece when um, you actually watch my video for the actual necklace. So let's uh, move on. Let's have a quick look at what we need. I'm using 19 gauge wire, which is 0.9 millimeter in UK terms. Um, I'm using a silver plate and I'm going to be using two lots of 12 centimeter lengths and two lots of 40 centimeter lengths here. Um, I'm also going to be using the tools I'm going to be using are really quite, quite basic. So I've got my chain nose pliers, my flush cutters and my six step bailing make, bail making pliers. You could also use round nose, pl round nose pliers and maybe a round pen or something like that if you don't have this tool. I've got a quite a lightweight hammer. It's about three ounces, that, that hammer. Um, I'm using a steel block, which I'll bring that in when we actually come to it. I've got a emery board or nail file just to round the end of our clasp off. And I've got my trusty Wags Y cone to make my cones. If you don't have a Wags Y cone, there are lots and lots of different tools on the market. There's something called Cometastic, which has lots and lots of different attachments, but it's a really cool tool to get hold of if you can get them. Okay, so let's just move a few bits out of the way and get started. So we're going to be starting off by making our clasp. So for this, I'm going to take one of my 12 centimeter lengths of wire. So like I said, this is the 19 gauge or 0.9 millimeter. I will say if you're making a clasp and you don't have that particular gauge, I would go up and use a one millimeter, which is your 20 gauge wire. No, it's not. It's your 18 gauge wire. Strike that 20 out of there. So I'm going to come in a few centimetres, probably about four centimetres from the end, using the strongest part of the pliers here. So we get a really nice angle and I'm just going to push that. So I've kind of got a shorter piece coming out at 90 degrees and my longer piece towards me at the bottom here. So now I'm going to take my six step bail making pliers. I'm going to make the small loop first. So I'm going to pop my pliers in using the smallest loop on here, which is around about two mil. And I'm going to push that tail all the way around. So when I grab this, I'll just take that back. I grabbed it. So I'm holding the shorter piece, but right up to that, that little angle that we made, pushing this all the way around and then passing it underneath or over, whichever you're more comfortable with until you get that nice loop and just position it so that you've got a lollipop loop and not a P shape. So we want the, the loop to sit nicely on top of the longer tail. Now I'm going to take my chain nose pliers. I'm going to hold that loop to retain the size and the shape of it. So I'm just using again the strongest part of my pliers. So that nicer, uh, that widest part right down at the bottom. And then I'm going to take this tail and I'm very slowly going to wrap this around three times. So if you wrap too fast, you won't get neat wraps. So you want to take your wire and really hold that tension in it and basically placing it around the wire. It's not wrapping like going like that. It's kind of just holding it and pulling it around. So it wraps really nice and neatly around until we can see we've got three wraps around. Now I can take my pliers and flush cut. So flush cutting is where we cut the wire, the, the piece close to the flat side of our, pl our pliers. So we get a nice flush cut and not a pointed cut because if we cut on the inside here, that's the pointy bit. That's the bit we just cut off and then just give it a squish like so. So now we've got, basically we've got a nice eye pin. Okay, so we've got a loop and three wraps. Now we want what we want to do is make the hook. 
Now, if you can see this, if we look at this compared to this, my hook is facing upwards. So if I turn that on the side, turn that aside, you can see which way we need to turn the hook. So I'm going to hold the loop. So holding the loop and turning, popping our pliers right in at the bottom there. And it's actually easy if you just kind of put a little bit of pressure on the other side of the loop and turn that away. And that will give you kind of that 45 degree angle away. So if we look at this this way, we can see that this is going to come around and follow that around that, that mandrel that we're going to use in a second. OK, so we're going to pop those out of the way for a second. We're going to go on and use our six millimetre size, which is the fourth size in your six step bell making pliers, if that's the right size for you. Again, we're going to pop our pliers. We're going to hold the longer length this time and we're popping our pliers as close to that angle that we just made as possible. And we're going to push our wire all the way around until it becomes parallel with the actual little mechanism that we've just made, the little wraps that we've just made, like so. OK, so now all I'm going to do is snip this off. So I'm going to snip this off about to the bottom of where that where those wraps are. It's, it will be a little bit too long, but don't worry about it. We can take that bit shorter. Now I'm going to pop that little bit of shape in to match. So all I'm going to do use for that is my chain nose pliers, just the tip of my chain nose pliers. I'm just going to pop them in and then just holding everything. I'm just going to pop those in and just kink that outwards a little bit. So that's giving us that hook shape. I can see now it said it would be it's a little bit too long. It's always best to leave things a little bit too long. And then you can snip off. You can't add wire. So now we've got our hook shape. And that's ready for hammering. And then we'll um, file the end of that in a few seconds as well. But we'll do that at the end. So I'm just going to pop that to one side for a second. And we're going to make the other side. So the other side, we're going to do the exact same as we did to begin with. We're going to make that small loop. So we're going to pop our pliers in. It's about four centimetres on this side, leaving the longer length towards us. Getting our pliers in and we're going to hold, we're holding the shorter bit here, but we're holding it right on that corner. But our pliers are actually holding not on the corner, but on the shorter piece. And then we can just pull around all the way and just negotiate this until we get all the way around to the other side. And then just wheel it until we get that pop, that uh, lollipop not a P shape because we want the wire to be coming 90 degrees from the loop, not towards one side of the loop. And then this time we're going to pop our pliers in. And this time, because we don't want our clasp, the other end of our clasp too big, we're just going to go around twice. So holding to retain the shape and very slowly pulling that wire around, shaping it around the base wire. And so we've got two complete loops of that. Give a little squish, make sure it's all settled in. And then we can use our flush cutters to flush cut the end and then give it a little squish. Like so. And then we're going to make the other one. So again, looking at this one, if I hold the loop there and hold the loop there, you can see the actual larger loop is the opposite direction. It's like a 90 degrees away from it. So again, we're going to hold that loop. So I'm holding the loop. The loop is flat facing upwards and I'm going to pop my pliers in. And just for this time, I'm just going to pop the very tip of my pliers in. I'm going to push this wire up. So I get that kind of 45 degree angle away like so. So if I hold this one up and hold that in the same direction, you can see this is where this is where the rest of your wraps are going to be. And then your loop's going to come around from here. So we're going to go back in and we're going to use that six millimetre again. And we're going to make sure the six millimetres on the outside as close as possible to the, the angle we just made. And pushing this all the way around to make that larger loop. This is kind of the eye section. OK, so before we go either over or under, we need to understand that 
we need to meet this. If we don't meet the end that we just cut, there will be a gap in our wraps. We want it to flow all the way around. So I can see my wire's coming over this way. So I need my wire to come the opposite direction. The wire that I cut's going over the top. It would have been coming over the top. So I need to be going in the opposite direction. So can we go spread the other way around? We're going to come underneath again, like we did the first time, because we're the opposite way around this time. Okay, and then I'm going to come over and over and over, and then this will meet together so our ends meet. So I'm going to hold that loop again to retain that shape, and very slowly. This is kind of the most important bit because you want it to get a really nice finish. So nice and slowly wrapping that and you will find because you use just the very tip of your pliers, you'll have two wraps. So you can see there, see if we can see that. Two wraps and then we can see the end that we want to meet. And this is going to come all the way up. I'm going to give that a little squish so I know it's sitting all together as nicely as possible. And then what we want to do is flush cut this. So flush cut so that the flat side of your pliers is closest to your work, as close to that where we've ended that as we possibly can. I think we need a tiny bit more of that. And then hopefully you should be able to just kind of squish it together so that your coils just flow around really nicely. Just spend a little bit of time just kind of squishing this there. That's really nice. So it all flows around really nicely like so. So that's both parts of our clasp made. So now we'll just move on to just work hardening those a little bit. So we're going to pop our block in there and using our hammer, which is it's only a very lightweight hammer. It's um, I think it's about th probably about three ounces or something like that. So that's uh, one I've already done. Pick up the right one. So we're just going to hold it on the edge because what we don't want to do is hammer the work that we just did because that's going to ruin it. So we want to hold it on the very edge just so just be careful of your fingers and just start tapping. So what we could do is we use that we hold the end of the hammer. So we're actually using the weight of the hammer head coming down on it and not any force as such. And that will minimise damage to the wire. So I'm just going to be quiet for a second just while I tap tap away so you can see what I'm doing. And then we can turn it and do the same on the other side. Like so. So that's work hardened now and we can do the same to our loop. I would just do the bigger loop, but you don't need to do the small loop, that's plenty strong enough. Like so, and then just to finish those off, what you can do is you can bring in your nail file, your emery board, and just spend a little bit of time just in one direction, like so, and then just rounding off that end and just spending a little bit of time doing that will make wearing it far more comfortable and it'll give you a really nice finish so a little bit more time than i have done there because i'm just saving time for the video and then if it has kind of because what what happens when you hammer wire it kind of splays out a little bit if you need to just pull it in slightly just use your the little bit of strength from your pliers just to pull that in a little bit. And there you have, you've got your clasp already and you can use that on multiples of things. So really quickly, moving on to making our little cones. These are really, really fun to make as well. You could just kind of make yourself a batch of them really, just because it's fun to do. So we're gonna take our Wags Y cone. What you will see is you've got a hole. Some other brands work from the bottom up, but the principle's still the same. You've got a hole in the top there. So I'm going to pop my wire through. With my left hand, I'm controlling the wire. With my right hand, I'm turning. So I've got about a centimetre and a half through, and then I can start turning, 
controlling with my left hand. I'm right-handed, by the way. And I'm going to leave a loop at the top. So I've left a loop. Don't worry, that's not a mistake. We need that loop. And then I'm going to wrap close to the comb. So don't worry that I've left a loop there. There is a reason for the loop. Otherwise, you can't get it off the comb, basically. So you're just going to turn and turn and turn. I'm controlling the wire with my left hand, turning with my right hand. Like I said, I'm right-handed. So if you're left-handed, it would be the other way around for yourself. And you can turn in any direction you want. It's whatever is more comfortable for you. And I, what I tend to do is I use the whole length of the comb. So that is as far as I can go. I can't go any further. And what you'll find is it won't come off the comb because it's attached to the top there. And that is why we need that loop so that we can snip that loop, pull that little piece out, and then your comb will release. So, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take, snip the top and the bottom so that they're in line with each other. And then that way, you know, you'll have the same size comb each time. So that's one. So take our, another length of uh, 40 centimetres of our 0.9 millimetre wire, 19 gauge. Pop our wire through. And again, I'll do this one a little bit faster, leaving that loop at the top and then windy, windy, windy all the way down. It's quite satisfying to do is this. All the way down to the bottom till you can't go anymore. Snip the loop. Pull out that piece and then you can snip the top and the bottom so that each end matches like so. So that's making your cones. Now it's very tempting to think, oh, but there's a there's a there's an end there that's going to catch on things. Don't worry. For for this kind of design, I do leave those ends because what you can do is you can turn them into your design and it actually it actually helps with your design. It kind of captures it a little bit more. So you, some people do make kind of fancy ends on these, but I like them just nice. I think they're they're fancy enough just leave them as they are and then we can utilize those ends to kind of grip our our design at the end so there we go we've got our end cones and our clasps ready to add to our design which i will show you how to do that in the the main video which is for this type of necklace here so this is your crochet necklace design and i will also show you um, how we how we attach what what happens inside these cones to um, attach into our design as well. So thank you very much for watching. I'd really appreciate if you liked this video. Just down below there, click that thumbs up, and also if you click that bell, you can subscribe to my channel. And if you click that bell and select all, you won't miss any of my videos. Um, I've got lots of ideas upcoming for the next few months. So thank you very much, and I will see you again soon.